Hello ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Captain Bob Bibbings and I have the extreme good fortune to be a member of the Trauger Gun Company. Trauger Gun Company have been in operation for some 30 years and in that time has been responsible for some of the most famous depictions of Napoleonic era warfare. Through my father who founded the company we have worked on everything from the Sharp and Hornblower TV series, the Master and Commander film, and even organised broadsides fired from and alongside HMS Victory. Today is something of a first for Trafalgar Gun Company, because we're going to be showing you footage that was filmed exclusively for an online audience. So as Jack Aubrey would say, what a fascinating modern world which we live in. So without further ado, let's take a look at the kit that we'll be watching today as we explore the mechanics of naval gunnery. The first piece we have for you today is our quarter scale Bluefield Pattern Naval Gun. Here she's dressed as a 32 pounder on our miniature gun deck. She's a working gun capable of firing projectiles and we use her at events where a full size 32 pounder might be a little bit too big. Purists will note that she does have some additional and indeed some missing tackle. This is because she's normally displayed without the stage that you currently see her on and as her creator says, a gun is naked without her rope work. What we've got is a breech section of a Bloomfield six pounder naval gun. We use this piece for training our gun crews but also for educating audiences on the mechanics of naval gunnery. Now, as you may have gathered, our particular interest lies in the ships and men of the 18th and early 19th century, where ships such as Victory sailed the world's oceans. A first rate such as Victory would carry over a hundred of these guns, some weighing in excess of three tons, and today we will explain in detail exactly how the men on board worked them to such devastating effect. A 32 pounder, such as those on Victory's lower gun deck, would be crewed by up to 14 men, each with a specific role, ranging from the powder boy, who ran the charges to the guns from the magazines, up to the gun captain, who controlled and directed the rest of the crew. The majority were there simply to hold the massive weight of the gun out to the position from which it could be fired. Now let's look at the loading process. With the gun run in, the gun captain serves the vent by placing his thumb on the vent to create an airtight seal. The charge is then rammed home into the chamber beneath the vent, followed by the shot and wad. See how we have elegantly replicated the difficulty of keeping a spherical object steady on a rolling gun deck. Once these are rammed home, the gun is then run out. With the gun run out, a vent pricker is inserted down the vent to pierce the charge. The hammer is then pulled to half cock and the frizzen is opened and primed with fine powder. Once the frizzen is closed, the powder is run back to the vent, which will either be filled with powder or have a quill inserted. Once the gun captain is happy with the lay of the gun, he pulls the hammer to full cock and with a light tug, fires the gun. Here we see the same again from the side, allowing you to see how the initial ignition travels down the vent and then burning the main charge that produces the force required to expel the ball. With the recoil bringing the gun back in board, the gun captain again creates an airtight seal on the vent. A metal hook called a worm is then inserted down the barrel. With the twisting motion, any remains of the previous charge are removed. Next, a wet swab is inserted used to extinguish any remaining embers. All of this combines to reduce the chance of a misfire when the next charge is inserted. Watching here again from a different angle, with the ball removed we can see the moment here that the stab of flame enters the chamber, which had a charge been present, would have ignited to fire the shot. And here we see from multiple angles the devastating force with which our training aid expels the ball. Now with all that being clear, let's move to the gun deck and burn some more powder. 
Here we see the same sequence performed on our miniature gun deck. First, the charge is introduced to the muzzle and then firmly rammed down to the base of the breech. Now obviously the crew in real life would be passing these tools out of the gun port and back down the barrel, whereas I would currently be trying to do this while swimming. In reality, a wad or ball would then be inserted, but not wishing to upset the neighbours even more so than we might already have done, we decided against blowing holes in the garden fence. So for this time, it's just a wad. The tools that are appropriately sized for passing through the gun port are for display purposes only, being in pristine condition. These larger tools that we're using are easier and safer to work with. The men of the gun crew then use the side tackles to haul the gun out, where the gun captain will then direct the laying of the gun. Once happy, the gun captain will use his vent pricker to pierce the charge before inserting his quill and priming with powder. The gun is then fired, this time using the traditional linstock and slow match. The recoil, bringing the gun back inboard. First, a worm is used to remove any remaining detritus. The wet swab is then wrung out and passed down the barrel. The audible thunk on withdrawal indicates a well fitted swab that should have extinguished all embers. Now, the last science we'll show you today is a demonstration on the difference firing via gun lock versus linstock makes in timing to demonstrate the advantage gun locks had in accurately firing a gun. Three, two, one, fire! So you can see the gun lock fired around two seconds before the linstock. On a heaving gun deck where the ship is moving along its line of travel, rising, rolling and pitching with the waves, that can make all the difference when trying to fire accurately, such as when you're aiming for masts and spars. Now that's pretty much all we've got for you today, but please do consider following us for future videos where we have the entire Trafalgar Gun Company armoury on display, showing you things such as how accurate we can, or perhaps can't be, the difference between the current British Army mortar and our own Cohorn mortar, and of course, bring out our big old 32 pounder to have a play. But for now, I'll leave you with some of our other bangs from our day's filming, and I'll catch you next time.